Hey there guys, DMO73 here, bringing you another feature match for this week, going again into our Echoes of the New World Rulers. Today I am playing a Dark Book Rush that was uh, designed by my fellow Team Ogre member, Del Anderson, and he's playing. I'm playing against my buddy Paul, who is playing, uh, I, I ca I'll call it Wandering Alice, um, just because of the way it's kind of designed, um, but this is another list that was designed by um, Josh, who uh, to kind of focus on the Vingolf Alice and the fact that the one that you can search out of your deck or play it from your deck whenever you search your deck uh, because she is a wanderer. Uh, and so with the new addition from Echo is that becomes kind of there's a little interesting interaction there. So we figured we'd give this a shot and let you see what it looks like. So Paul hits that first turn. Um, Deep blue and then his light source which then can become a uh, green source to play that sacred elf. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do a first turn magic stone analysis with energize and attempts to play a sacred elf that is going to fly. Uh, so the dark book rush is 20 green stones and it's just you, um, cause you can play uh, will of despair cards with any color. So you just rush in with as much uh, pressure as you can with swiftness while you're ramping. And then you use dark book to kind of grab the finisher from the side deck that you need. So Paul just um, calls for stone and passes there. I'm gonna just spend my turn playing more Sacred Elves and ramping a bunch, and then attempt to play Atama, uh, which is going to go through. So now I have lots of stuff. And then this is one of the amazing, uh, you see there in my hand, I have a really good card, um, but I'm saving it because I don't wanna get separate wins perhaps. So I'm just gonna play another Tama uh, and draw some more cards and just fill up the board. So now I have some things to kind of ping his little Alice's scouts and stuff out of the way with the Tamas, because I know those are coming as you can see here. Um, but I have that uh, little red also from Vingolf 3, so because I have uh, nothing but basic wind stones, sh every stone that I call gives her plus one plus one, and uh, because I control a basic wind, she's going to have swiftness, which just turns her into a massively cheap um, rush card. Um, so Paul gets that uh, Alice's little scout. Um, if he'd had a little bit more will, he would have been able to grab uh, that Alice out of the deck, um, but he's trying to stick that... Um, Wanderer edition that decreases the cost of Wanderer cards and gives them plus four. Uh, it's very, very powerful. So he's going to go ahead and swing in with the Alice's Little Scout, which I think is a little bit weird here, but I'm not too concerned about it. It gets a blocker out of my way, so I'm just going to take the damage and go down to uh, 38. Um, then I'll recover here. So call another stone, get up to four stones, sitting now at seven will, which means that next turn I can start putting in a lot of pressure um, off of my flip with book. Um, is important to note there that uh, he does have a Dawn of the Earth, which is really good against book. Um, but uh, swing in for seven with that little red for just one cost. He's debating on whether he wants to do something in response there. So he's got a bear magic in his hand, Dawn of the Earth, he missed the chance for a cancel um, it's gonna go ahead and pay two and then use uh, deep blue to go into his deck and grab another Alice's little scout which uh, he's I'm gonna go ahead and let him block I don't really care about um, him drawing a card there uh, I want to just try to push in damage as best as possible and I don't want my Tamas to be useless so Play that Dark Melgus, who is a Will of Despair creature, which is great, or attempts to cast it anyway. He will get cancelled, and then I have to feel bad. As you can see there, though, I have another one in my hand. But the other thing is he is tapped out. So I have that Wallowind, and I could cast it if I wanted to. Um, and I go ahead and decide to use the Wallowind there uh, in my hand to stop the seal um, so that my Melgus can go through. So... I'm actually going to swing into his dork, so I decrease his will, because I know... Uh, I also missed two opportune times to swing with Tama there. That was a mistake, a misplay on my end. Um, I could have just swung in for 400 damage for free there. I just didn't use them. Um, so I... <laughs> Making some making some misplays here. I know he plays Hook in his deck, um, which can be a little bit of a problem. But also keeping him on low will when he doesn't have that addition is really good for me because it makes it so that it's very hard for him to bring out those Alice's from the deck. Uh, so right now I'm in a pretty good position, and he's not necessarily a color combination that um, has any form of board wipe. Um, green, white, blue, uh, hint of red. Um, there's no super huge board wipe there other than interdimensional escape. I'm not necessarily sure if he plays it, um, but now would be a good time to cast it if he did. 
And so right now I'm sitting at, uh, he's got to be really careful here because with seven will, he knows that I can go into my grip deck and grab Umtamir uh, with the side deck for the rush, which would essentially get me three other cards that all have swiftness um, just out of the main deck, uh, just for free. Uh, and I would just suddenly be swinging at him with a ton of damage. So now in comes the Tamas. Um, he goes ahead and takes the 200 damage from the first one. Uh, which now essentially makes all the rest of my damage for this turn free, provided he doesn't suddenly have something insanely massive. Swing in with uh, the other Tama, swing in with the 7-7 seven, seven, uh, Little Red to put him down to 29. He's debating on what he wants to do. Attempts to block. I'll use the Tama to shoot it out of the way so I can get in for the 9 damage, there, or 7 damage there, and put him down to 29. Another 7 from Melgus. And then I'm debating. Uh, I haven't called a stone for a turn. I just didn't recover my ruler. So I pay the seven um, for book, and I, uh, I put the trigger on the chase, and he does the right play here, which is to cast uh, Dawn of the Earth with the mode that anything I bring into play without casting it, resonator-wise, gets our feed. So um, now I get to go into my deck if I want to, my side deck, and grab a creature of total cost X or less uh, and try to bring it into the field. And But because of Dawn, I'm just going to choose X equals zero. I'm just going to choose not to grab a creature. I'm going to fail to find so something doesn't get RFG'd. Um, the problem here now is he's successfully locked me out of book until the end of the game, unless I find a high-speed dash to be able to flip back, but now my book is just a glorified stone collar, because um, with no resonator attached to it, there's no way for book to flip back over without using high-speed dash. So while you didn't see that necessarily in the last feature match of the book, you get to see it here. So he gets that Alice's Little Scout at the end of his turn, recovers... So the two primary ways that his deck can go in to grab that Alice is by using Saint Alice to grab a Deep Woods, or Deep Blue, sorry, I do that all the time, or using Deep Blue to grab a, um, a, a creature. So um, a, an Alice's Little Scout or something like that. Um, so the reason why he's, so he's calling for stone here, uh, actually he's not, he's just gonna go ahead and search. So he's searching for a, um, a Deep Blue, and then just for paying for two, because the cost is reduced um, thanks to the Wanderer edition, uh, he can just play that Alice for two, breaks it out, and suddenly there's a 9-9 nine, nine on the board. Um, I wish she had flying. It'd be much better if she did, but she's at least a creature. So I'm going to call for stone here, um, and then untap my ruler for some reason. Don't worry, I don't double tap. I swing in with the Tama. Uh, I'll, I'll just let, let the block happen. No damage happens there. He draws a card. Uh, swing in for, um, there I recatch myself. Swing in for seven. Uh, I'm gonna pay the life necessary to make Melgus be stronger and have first strike to try to kill the Alice, keeping the board clear. It's going to pitch for the, um, Alice's, the, he's going to pitch to produce blue to play Charlotte's Water Transformation Magic. I'm going to attempt to see uh, Wall of Wind that, and he pitches Deep Blue to produce the will he needs for that. So then I can play another Melgus, uh, but uh, pay the life to give it first strike, and then swing into that um, Alice to kill it. So keep in mind, because I paid the life and therefore I have first strike, that dark, you know, that Alice will then just go back to the bottom of his deck. Uh, and because it's already taken damage, I only need to pay once, which is nice. And then I'll swing in for uh, eight damage with the little red putting him down to 14. Then I'll cast another little red, swing down for another eight, which puts him down to six, uh, and then I'll swing for two, swing for two, and swing for two for 600 damage with the elves to just finish the game. So despite the fact that my book didn't go off, uh, I still just uh, had enough small pokes in the game to be able to make that work. Plus little red again is insanely fast. So. This game again, Paul's trying to hope, hopefully get that addition. You see he's got them in his hand already um, a little bit faster so he can start making his plays. Um, and he, and we'll see how this game goes. And I'm again hoping to possibly land an Oom Tamir this time. I am gonna be on the play. Um, I don't have to necessarily fear being on the play because of the fact that he does not have um, a, uh, because of the fact that he does not have a, um, 
Energize ability. Now he taps there to search for a deep blue, and I actually make a correction for him here. Um, this is a rule that doesn't come up very often because you don't have a lot of rulers with tap effects. Both players in this game actually skip their first recovery phase. This is very important to note um, because if he had actually followed through with that tap ability, um, he would not actually get to untap on his first turn and he would forfeit um, that stone call for the turn. So this is an uh, old rule that came up a lot when playing the old Abdul in Season 1 um, or like Bahamut in Season 1 players would try to abuse that ability by going second so they could tap uh, and the thing is you don't get anything out of that um, when that happens so you just have to be really careful there so I let him take it back for the purpose of the video uh, I cast call for stone magic stone analysis get a stone cast Tama and then pass again I'm trying to ramp up as fast as possible I'm sitting at four will to his two at the end of this turn um, very very far ahead despite I don't have very many cards but again the faster I ramp up the like more likely I am to be able to cast Umtamir and I just refill my board simply by grabbing Umtamir uh, and then I just rush in for the last of the damage so he plays that um, bow which is good for him because he does play Ruler's Memoria in the deck he was hoping not to get punished turn one um, we'll have to see whether or not he what else he gets out of this Calls for a stone. It's another blue source. This is a problem because as you see in his hand, he is sitting on a lot of green cards um, and the deep blue is an issue. So this is just something to uh, note. He does go ahead and swing in for two, which I don't think was super smart. He could have kept it as a blocker to prevent it some damage. Um, I'll swing in with Lars for attempt to swing in for Lars for six. He takes the damage here. He could have just bowed it and forced it to only be two damage. Um, and again, I miss a swing with Tama here. So lots of suboptimal plays from the rush player. You can tell I don't play rush very often. So recovers, hopefully see that deep blue. He does not, does have, he could just search here and abandon his stone call, which might be the best play. Um, but he decides to call stone and hopefully get a green. Unfortunately, he does not seize another uh, light vapors. Does have that second bow though. So he can make use of the uh, Charlotte's water transformation magic in his hand at least to try to slow things down. Attempts to crash into the Lars. I'm going to have it switch its attack and defense. Uh, and then he's going to uh, make his... Um, trying to play some silliness here. He's just going to swing into the Lars. It'll die. Uh, and then... Um, he plays the Flute's Water Dragon. Well, now, so if he had done this a little bit differently on his turn, what he could have done is just swing in the elf, uh, the thing before calling stone to see what he draws. He would have seen the flute, been able to play it, call stone, and then he'd immediately be able to tap his Alice, not miss his ramp for the turn, grab his deep blue, and immediately be back in this game. Um, you know, because he'd have access to green again. And then he'd be able to play his ramp dork. Uh, maybe even Akagi's Moonbeam Butterfly to try to ramp into something. So he's going to do this move where he's going to um, attempt to ping Melgus for 4 damage and then use Melf uh, use um, Charlotte's Water Transformation Magic. But this is another important moment to talk about um, the proper sequencing of that. So the proper sequencing here is to do, uh, in response to attackers, ping it for 4 damage, and then you let that priority sequence go, and then in blockers, then you use Charlotte's Water Transformation Magic, because the rules process will see as soon as Charlotte's Trans resolves, Melgus will become a 4-4 four -four that has 4 damage on it, so he'll immediately die. If you do it in the same sequence like this, where he casts, uh, chases the water uh, transformation magic to the bow, I become a 4-4, but then there's a priority sequence where I can try to pump up Melgus um, before the bow damage hits, thus with the rapid growth as you saw, thus letting me um, survive. And he does it the right way there uh, for the Lars and successfully kills it, but I still got 7 damage in off of the um, Melgus, which is still really good for me. So he's going to call stone with the dork. Uh, I'm not necessarily super worried about him being able to grab at this point with my will being so high. Not super worried about him grabbing the um, deep blue. Just because of the fact that I'm pretty far ahead at this point and it helps cost him most of his turn. Uh, I don't really see why he didn't just cast it there. Um, just like go search for the card uh, and then he could start doing his setup. Um, but he chooses not to. At this point in time I'm going to go ahead and say I'm going to try to rush him. He does spends both of the bows to try to kill the Melgus. In response, I'm just going to go ahead and rapid grow the Melgus. Um, 
and kill. So that's out of the way. He didn't even use the rapid growth. Swinging for two damage there. Um, in comes another Melgus. Melgus is going to swing for another seven. Take him down to 17. Pass the turn. At the end, he's going to there. He's going to go grab that. Um, deep blue so at this point in time he's kind of back in um purely i'm trying to check to make sure i have all the stones that i need that i actually did call for stone <laughs> and tap my ruler um and he also is going to get to bring out that alice at the end of his turn too because uh it's searching for the um deep blue is free so we can pay the three and, and cast the alice um which is really good for him so now he's got that addition in his hand so he can now go in and make um he can go in and make her a 9-9. It's really unfortunate that he saw another Alice there. Um, it's really not that great for him. Uh, he can cast... Uh, technically, with the deep wood blue, he can cast both the addition and the other Alice and put out two 9-9s, which is still pretty good. Um, which is probably his best play here and try to kill one of the Melguses. Um, the problem is I can pump up Melgus or I can just use my Tama as well to kill one of these Alices. So at most, he's going to be keeping one creature around. Um, and then my uh, other Melgus gets to stay on the board. Um, and then I can just ramp into something like Viola. Um, if one of them connects, then I can just ramp in to save Viola or something like that um, off of Dark Book. Uh, and then just swing in the air to finish the game. So he plays the addition, which is fine. I'm going to go ahead and say Wall of Wind there. Um, going to go ahead and cast another Wall of Wind there. And then he's going to um, pay for that. And now that he's successfully paid a bunch of will, I'm going to go ahead and use the Severing Winds that's in my hand. His first card for the turn was the Deep Blue. So I've officially now just locked him out of being able to play anything for the turn. He doesn't get his addition. That guy is just a little... Uh, that guy is just a little 5-5. Nothing really for me to deal with. He just plays the Dork. Uh, and then I'm again sitting at 7 will here. So I can just go pay 7... After I recover, flip my book, and at that point, Paul just scoops, but we're going to go ahead and watch me go grab Um Tamir. So for seven, Um Tamir comes out, which was what was supposed to happen in game one. Um, I grab the Little Red, which will be insanely fast and powerful. I can grab a Sylvia to make it so his Alice won't be able to block, and then a third Malchus, uh, and then just all of that damage comes in. If you actually track it all, I think that's, with me paying life, that's everything I would need to do lethal. But that's it for the match, guys. Um, the uh, footage will be up later this week. Let me know what you guys think. Go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, this is DMO73, signing off.